Hey everyone, it's George Kroos. Welcome to the first of the four highlight videos from the Innovators Mindset podcast in 2022. And I love these videos because it gives you some snippets from some of the best stuff that people shared on the podcast. It's just a great way to connect and kind of revisit some of these things. And it actually ties in beautifully to the theme of today's episode. Um, even though there's different guests, there was a theme that had emerged in each one. And this one was focused on the notion of reflection. And I've been asked a lot of times, <clears throat> what is the best thing you've ever done for professional learning? By far, it is not even close, is when I started my blog. And I think for me, the reason the blog was so powerful is because it encouraged me to continuously look back and really kind of dissect and go through the things that I've done in the past and learn from them so I can move forward. And even though I do talk about innovation, it's obviously a huge focus of my work. If you don't effectively look back and learn from your mistakes, learn actually also from the things that you've had success in and try to repeat those successes because sometimes what we do is we find success in the past, but then we move forward and we try different things and then things go astray. But what worked for us in the past, we gotta look at that too. And so this theme of reflection is so crucial to the idea of looking forward. And so the guests in this show share some really great insights, some really great um, uh, ideas on this topic. And I know you're going to really appreciate it. And I hope that you love these highlight videos because it's a great way to kind of look back at some of the people and some of the ideas that they shared, but also take the time to, you know, write your, some of your reflections in the comments, maybe share this on Facebook or uh, any other place and talk about some of the things that you learned, because I think that's a really good process. If you want to get the most out of podcasting, blogs, you know, the things that you consume, how do you make your own connection to that content? So hopefully that's just an insight, an idea for you, but I, I, I hope you enjoy this episode of the highlights from 2022 from the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm recording this early August, just about to go on to basically a speaking tour, uh, which is typically what I do every single August. Uh, and one of the questions that I've been getting, and I was thinking about this quite a bit, is how do I stay motivated? This excitement that I'm feeling from your talk today, uh, you know, and that's part of my job is to get people really pumped up and inspired. And, you know, I, I was thinking about this, the, the things I'm trying to do is really kind of celebrate people, make sure they feel valued. Uh, the second thing is to challenge people and make, you know, push them to, to achieve more, um, you know, than they're doing. You know, I think this is something growth is really important to me. And then the third thing that I try to achieve in everyone that talks is I, I, I inspire and motivate people to see that they can actually, you know, hit those challenges. Not to get them feeling uh, overwhelmed, but just whelmed. That's one of my favorite things, isn't that? We don't want them underwhelmed. We want them overwhelmed. We just want them whelmed right at that point. And the question that I get is that people walk out, they're really excited, they're pumped up, they're motivated, and they'll say, well, how do I keep this all year? How do I keep this motivation all year? And I'm going to answer that. But in a second, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to tell a little bit of a story about my last night. Um, last night, uh, I was flying in to uh, Orlando, and one of the things I'm realizing about living in Florida in summer is that it is stormy. <laughs> there are storms galore, and they tend to happen at night, and typically they happen uh, in the afternoon, and uh, I, I was actually about to land, and uh, I was flying You know, after an event. Everything was on time. Beautiful. We're about to land, and right about we're about to land... Uh, I noticed the plane's going down and then it starts going up and there's like an up sound that I just do not like. And then I look out the window and there are storms and it's bumpy and it's, you know, just kind of going a little bit crazy out here. So this is not something I'm used to, uh, at this time of year. And so we're, we're about to get there. And, uh, and so I noticed we go up and then we start circling around. I was like, okay, so you know, it's, they're obviously out waiting a storm, blah, blah, blah. So we circle and then we're about to go down. It's really turbulence, high, high turbulence here. It's just a little terrifying. And then we start going down about to land and then we go up again. And it is super bumpy and terrifying. And what they said is like, hey, we're going to actually, we're going to run out of gas. So we're going to fly to an airport um, about, you know, 
25 minutes away. So we're not going to land in Orlando, uh, you know, basically on a scheduled time. So they actually, you know, land um, about, you know, three hour drive, you know, I think it's like 25, 30 minutes away um, from this airport in Fort Lauderdale. So we actually land in Fort Lauderdale, not knowing if we're going to get, you know, back to Orlando. And it's obviously way past the time I'm supposed to land and it's getting really, really late at night. So they decide, they fill up for gas. Hey, we're going to try it. The storm seems to have passed and we go back. And then it's again, uh, you know, terrifying. Uh, it's still a little bit stormy. We do the up down thing again, which is always really scary. And eventually we land. So we land. I'm like, oh, finally, even though it's super late, we're going to get home. But because they had to land at a different terminal, the person that, you know, put the gate, they like actually missed the gate. So they had to wait, you know, uh, another hour or so just to connect the gate and you know i'm like some people complain about this and here's the thing I, i'm all about, like i don't want to land in storms i don't want to get struck by lightning so you do what you need to do i know i'm super inconvenienced because but you know i'd rather be inconvenienced than you know not land <laughs> so you, you get it right i'm sure you know it's a plane it's pretty amazing technology that we have so i get home super late i don't get home till um you know obviously late and then you know have uh, this is like my one day that i have kind of to get stuff done and then i'm out i'm i'm so I'm, I'm exhausted and even though i'm exhausted and it was a rough night i got up and i did my workout did the thing that i had to do i have a goal for steps i have a goal for push-ups i have like certain things i have to hit every single day and i did them and i'm tired but i did them and I think for me, when I was talking to this group yesterday, I said, look, motivation is not the key. When you're thinking about motivation, we're often thinking about what people do for us, right? That people get us inspired. And I think sometimes it's good, right? Uh, I love, you know, once in a while working with a trainer or, you know, hearing an amazing speaker, things like that too, because it gets you pumped up. But you know, it only lasts a little bit. You can't have that trainer all the time. And if you do, it's going to be very, very costly. And probably you're not really learning to figure out things on your stuff your own. So instead of focusing on motivation, the focus really is about discipline. I always felt this paranoia as a teacher before I was an administrator that I would be taking part in a process that was inauthentic. Like, oh, they already know what they want to do. And I'm just here right. like to go through the motions so that they can say there was teacher involvement. Like I was a bit of a skeptic, like, right. you know, just tell me what you want me to do. Like, right. right. Like I, I, I was a team player, but at the same time, like I, right. I felt like there was always like, um, a plan that was mapped out for like the next decade, right? right? right. <laughs> like we were supposed to follow it. And you know, the reality is things change quickly and there are a lot of moving pieces to what's going on at that like level of administration. And a lot of times they really do, you know, and I, I know I did as an administrator, I wanted to hear what the teachers had to say before decisions mm -hmm. were made. And like, sometimes I think that's hard to believe and like what I have found is on both sides um, and not just in this school district, like in other districts where I've, you know, held different yeah. positions, like people can make a lot of assumptions about what the other side is thinking. And like, it comes down to like relationships and communication. Like so often, you know, if someone walks out of a room, it's like, oh, well, like, you know, people heard that the principal wanted us to go ahead and like come up with a full plan for this. And it's like, oh, I think he was just like bringing that up to, right. you know, see if we had any thoughts, like we were, right. were not expected to like do any work on it. And so I think it's just, it's a reminder to me about the importance of communication and relationships and like, you know, for people on both sides to be open to dialogue, like when there are questions, because it's when people like sit and wonder and question right. and right. like they get paranoid and think that, you know, things aren't positive. Like that's when, um, the culture takes a hit. And so I'm always like, I'm a good listener. And I also know when people just need to say something and don't need an opinion. Right. <laughs> so oh. that's important too. <laughs> that, that actually, like, like it, when you talk about that, there's a certain amount of trust that has to go in that process, right? And trust is built over time. I remember when I was a principal, I would tell my staff straight up, hey, like, I will tell you when there's a decision that I have to make where I you're, you can tell me your input, but it's not going to matter because that is like, there's outside sources. So like sometimes it's a district demand that I have to do. Right. So I don't want to, I never want to get your input pretending I can actually take it and do something with it. Now you can tell me it, but just, I'm going to tell you straight up. This is not a, this is a, this is a decision that's made. But if I ask you for input, legitimately 
like if I'm asking you for input, I am, I am trying to make a decision together as a community. Right. And so I think part of it too, is sometimes, sometimes what happens. And I think that's one of the, what I, I guess part of it was the reason I did that was because I got really frustrated when I would give input to stuff that I knew didn't matter. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like, don't waste my time. Just tell me that you have to do the thing because I don't want you. I like, there's, I would rather you not listen to me than you pretend to listen to me and then do nothing with what I said. That's right. where I struggle. Right. And I struggle when I see that in schools with kids like, Oh, we empowered student voice. Uh, we didn't do anything based on what they said, but Oh, we let them talk. And it's like, well, don't waste your time. They got other stuff they can be doing. Right. So that's something that's, you know, I think is that's trust. There's trust in that, you know, that process. And I think that's where a lot of school districts go wrong is they are constantly focused on the new stuff and the latest and greatest and all of these things as opposed to saying like, hey, yeah, those things are happening, but let's just be really good at these few things so that we're we're not just focused on the newest technology, but really how do we actually, um, you know, for example, I, I like I, I still use blogs all the time because I think it actually really helps with writing. I think it's one of the best ways to learn to read and write, communicate, especially online. And so I, I appreciate that too, is like you're getting to that place of depth. And I think for a lot of people listening to, don't focus on all of the things, focus on a few things, doing them really well. And I think you'll, you'll be better served. I think your staff will be thankful for that as well. Is that something yeah. that you've seen as working in your, like in the process of what you do? Like, how, how is that? Like, how, what's your philosophy so, you just shared? Yeah. Um, well, the whole idea of, task before apps or uh, you, mm. you want the content, whatever the content is and the apps or the tools are secondary. Um, yeah. But when, when you find a tool, I'm all about, let's learn this tool. Yeah. Let's not try to learn all these tools. You go to these things and you see 50 tools in 50 minutes. And right. I have to say, I've been guilty of doing some of those right. sessions. Uh, but when I think they're really great tools, of course. Right. Um, and I'll, Actually, I'm signed up to do one at a conference in a couple of months. But uh, the idea behind that is, yeah, I'm going to give you a scatter plot of a, or a scatter plot, a bunch of tools that you can use. However, I want you to just find one and focus in on it. Right. Dial in on that one tool and become really become an expert at that one tool. And if you want to add another one, yes, but don't try to add more than one. Never, ever, right. ever try to learn. So yeah, you maybe you have the cap capacity to do so. I remember a couple of years ago, my wife was going to Finland. My daughter was taking Spanish for the first time and my son was taking French for the first time. Or my daughter was taking Spanish for the eighth time. I don't know, she right. did in elementary school. But um, I said, so I'll take, I'll learn some French, Spanish and Finnish. Right. Uh, all at the same time. That didn't work. <laughs> right, right. And it was work. one of those things where, uh, yeah. I know a couple of words in all the languages, but that's about it. And right. it's one of those things that I think had I honed in, focused in, uh, drilled in, uh, it would have been better for me. And I think it's the same way with uh, technology. Yeah. The, the, so it, it is kind of interesting. And I, I start with this because I've had lots of conversations with educators and it's like, oh, like our school just inundates us with so many tools. And like we we're, we're struggling with this. But then the 50 tools in 50 minute session is always jam packed at conferences and then conferences repeat them because they know they're just a sure thing, right? Like always. they'll always get a huge attendance where it's like, Hey, like, are we actually like advocating for something that we're not like, we actually will, we're kind of going against. And I, I remember there's this distinct time I was doing a workshop with a school and I actually was shocked at this answer. I was expecting something totally different. I said, look, if I, could just let you do whatever you want with any technology you figured out on your own, but you had all the choice in the world. Would you prefer that? Or would you just want me to decide for you a couple tools, but promise you that we're going to focus on that for a couple of years. And they're like, just tell us what to do. Just, just, and I was like, Oh, and I think it was because a lot of people know that we have to implement technology in meaningful ways into our classrooms because it's just, part of society it's part of the world but they don't know where to start and so they become so overwhelmed that they just push it all away out of all the jobs i ever had principal was my favorite job i, I like i and i worked at central office i, I love being a vice principal i, I love being a, i love being a principal mm -hmm. i loved it and it is tough 
um, to see a lot of people don't want to go into that position. And I'm hearing more like there's teacher mm-hmm. shortages, but I hear there's principal shortages too uh, all over North America. So if somebody who's like kind of thinking about it, you know, and like there's 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 positives and negatives to every position. But mm-hmm. if you're talking to someone who's like just kind of on that tip that they might want to go into like school administration, like what would what would you like? How could you like sell them on that? Like that here's here's like why this is a, a great opportunity. I'm a I'm gonna be clear and concise. First, I speak a lot about this on on my podcast. Um and like the episodes that I do. What's your what's your podcast called? Unapologetic leadership. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, man. Appreciate that. No, I talk a lot about this. And I, you know, when I talk to school leaders, I'm like, you know, if you could talk to somebody who's looking or like the story that you're talking about, if you could tailor this to somebody who's thinking about or that are in their first year, that's like, man, I don't know if I made the right decision. Right. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. Like there are there to be honest, there are more for me. There's more pros than cons to leading a building. Right. Like I get to make change on a very large scale by having that 30,000 foot view. But then I get a choice to say, you know what, I'm going to go and do this today. I'm going to go and sit with this group. You know what? I want to go on a field trip with these students or this group of students, or I'm going to go participate in some after school event. Like you get, you get the ability to choose a lot of things to go and participate in because you have a global perspective. Right. Uh, my wife always asked me, she's like, you know, you got to go to that. You got to go to that. It's like, yeah, I, I do. Nobody's telling me I have to. I get to go do it because I get to see kids at their best. Um, I've seen a kid who struggled like this is where they're successful. Like I get to go and be there because I know those stories. Um, um, the job is challenging. Yes. Not, hands down. Job is challenging. But uh, when I say it's it's rewarding, like you can look back on um you get to look back on what you've done over the years. I always tell my students and I tell staff like, man, what's your legacy? Like, what is the story that people are going to say, tell about you when you leave? They're going to say, yep, they got in the seat, they maintain and they like things just kind of stayed the same. Or we were able to do this. We had these awesome experiences just through the connections that we have. And we did that. You know what I mean? Like there's, you can create a culture that's defined by your vision and your mission to want to do great for kids and your staff. Like for me, that's my day-to-day mission. Like I get to go to work every day to do, to, to move forward in the mission and vision that I have as the principal set for this building. When do you kind of decide like, Hey, this is something that we need to stick with and get really good at versus like identifying when it's, it is a problem. Maybe it isn't the best direction for us to go. Cause I think, you know, like I, I try to, there's a lot of things I've been doing over and over and over again for years and they get progressively better. And there's things that I absolutely love doing, but I've also, um, I kind of, sometimes when I feel like, Hey, this isn't working for me anymore. I'm okay to drop stuff. Like I'm okay to move on from it. So how, how do people kind of identify the difference between those two things? So I think for me, I, and I spent a lot of time talking about this starting friction is a huge thing. Um, you know, when you are starting something new, you're literally rebuilding the pathways and creating more connections in the way that you now need to think. And it's so funny that you say that because like right now, my kid's school is changing their math curriculum. Right, right. And they just changed their math curriculum. Like I've got a seven-year-old and they had just changed the math curriculum when my older one was approximately the same grade so probably about six years ago and i think that there is this fine line of taking data and recognizing when something isn't working Mm -hmm. and also recognizing that at the beginning you're not gonna be that great at it i often use the example of podcasting because i think podcasting is such a great example that people can really understand even if they're not podcasters Um, I am not a podcaster. I just like going on people's other people's podcasts. But like if you're a podcaster, you know, you have to learn how to audio edit. You have to learn how to market. You have to learn how to ask insightful, interesting questions to keep both the person you're interviewing engaged as well as the audience. There's a lot of different skills involved. Well, 
if you look up how many podcasts the average podcast has, it's seven because wow. most people hit two, three, four and stop because they weren't aware of how much work it was going to be. But that work gets so much easier. Audio editing gets easier the more you do it. So I think that when you are at the beginning of a path, you have to recognize it's going to be a struggle. Like none of it's going to be rote. It's going to be hard. And you really have had to think through that this hardness was is going to be worth it for these reasons. But then you also have to be looking for is the hardness getting easier? Like is, and is there something wrong in my approach? Because I mean, with everything, you know, I had like, we've, the approach may or may not work for you. Like a lot of times we are, we like to throw the kitchen sink at it. Like I can do everything. And then you vastly under overestimate how much time you have. And so really focusing on your strengths to me is the best way to evaluate whether or not something is working. Like, is this using my strengths? Right. Is this using my core competencies? Am I seeing a trajectory where this will become easier to implement? This will become what I need it slash want it slash hope for it to be. 